Are you working in Zoom and you need to share background music and maybe talk over it? Like maybe you're a yoga teacher, you lead a meditation, or you're just doing some kind of a workshop or class where you want to speak over music? Well, I'm going to walk you through a couple of my tips for how you can set yourself up for success to make sure the music's not too loud, you're not too quiet, and you get just the perfect balance of what you're looking for in Zoom. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements. I'm a freelance event producer, and I'm based out of Seattle, Washington, and I drop new videos every single Monday, so I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday. If you also want to know what I do outside of these YouTube videos, visit loganstrategygroup.com to learn more about my in-person, virtual, hybrid, and all-around event production experience. And if you like more free content, I am the co-host of the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson of EP Events. And we have new episodes every single Wednesday where we talk about, you know, everything from what's a good run of show to how do you staff your event? What's a good event proposal look like? And we have guests and people from across the event industry join us to come in and talk about their own subject matter experts. Everything from surprising and delighting to Google Analytics as a small business owner uh, to even the legal resources that you need as a small business owner. So give it a listen wherever you listen to podcasts. So this is a question that I actually got from a couple people on my video all about Zoom tips for how to share background music, and I will link to it, and I'll link below in the notes um, if you would like to go and watch that video. I would say that's kind of the intro to this video because that shows you how just to share background music in Zoom and gives you a couple of my basic tips but this one, uh, because I had multiple people asking me about it, I figured I might as well make a video to help anybody else out there who is struggling with finding the right audio balance between their voice and any music that they're playing into Zoom. Now, the hard part with this is we sound one way to ourselves and you're going to sound a different way in Zoom. And what do I mean by that is right now I'm hearing myself talk in the room that I am. I'm talking into a microphone, but I'm not hearing the finished product per se. So this is why you'll see like recording artists have like producers and people like mixer, like audio techs listening live to hearing what the mix is of their voice and their audio or of their voice and the music. So without you having your own A1 audio technician behind you, a couple tips I have for you for how you can DIY this yourself. All right. So here I am in Zoom. And one of the hard parts here is I'm recording my audio for this video. So it's hard to show you the exact mix in Zoom. But to walk you through, my main tip if you're trying to play music and speak over it is to make sure that you test this. And so how can you test it? One, I would either, if you're by yourself and there's no way you can bring anybody else in, I would just hit our real awesome record button here in Zoom and just hit record. You can just record to the cloud computer that has no impact on, the, the difference between the two has no impact on the audio. It more has an impact on the different you know visuals that you're getting um, but you can just hit record to the cloud so i'm just going to be talking into zoom one two three four five and just see what that sounds like without having any music and then you're going to go to your share screen just like i showed you before you can do computer audio only and so the program that i like to use is my um, itunes it's very easy i have here a little like um, music that i've got from a royalty free playlist from youtube and so one of the things you'll see is i have it super low like very low in Zoom um, and to the point where I can play a little higher, a little lower, but it's really low. And the whole reason that I do that is because you want to talk over it and it's going to sound super low to you. But everybody's microphone, everybody's player that they're using, it's all different. So this is why you need to record yourself. And once you've recorded yourself, um, another workaround, I've done this live, like with another person in the meeting when I have a tech team of just more than just me, I'll have somebody and I'll be like, how does that audio sound? Is that good enough? Is that too high, too low? Um, and the reason is I'd rather, if anything, you be the music slightly too low, especially if you have to talk over it because you want to be able to be heard clearly. Um, I also like that even if you're not speaking over the audio, because then you're putting the control in the listener's hands where they can crank you all the way up. And you want to make sure when you're cranked all the way up, you can hear the music and hear yourself as the speaker. But you want to make sure that it's not too loud. It's not nothing is too loud. The music, you, you want to make sure it's in the hands of the other person that they can adjust your audio. So test, test and test some more. My other tip for you would be after you've done your test and after you've done your recording and you listen back and you might have to do this one or two times or maybe three or four times to get it right. But 
write down whatever levels those are. Write down what lever level you had at iTunes or your media player, whatever your level your gain is for your microphone. But just write it down to make sure that you remember whatever that level was. Because it's it really does vary per setup. Unfortunately, I can't give you a prescription of, hey, this balance exactly works. Um, but making sure that you're just kind of testing it out. And then my third tip for you would be to make sure every couple months you redo this process or at least rewatch your own, like if you record your workshops or your classes or your events, just go back and listen to it just to make sure nothing has changed because Zoom does make updates every so often. And while most times the updates don't drastically impact, you know, what the audio sounds like in Zoom, it can have an impact. So I found it's just really helpful. Or if you change over to a different laptop or computer, just doing that little test Um, It is one of those things that actually I personally do almost like every time if I have to speak. I'm way more comfortable behind the scenes. That's like where I normally am. I've just been starting getting more into speaking. And that is something I will always go if the event's in Zoom. I'll go in Zoom by myself and practice talking, hit record. And it's helpful just to practice. But then I go back and listen to make sure that my mic position is correct. Sometimes I have it static on the table like it is right now. Sometimes I have it on, a, on an arm. And I and I didn't realize it for a couple sessions. And then somebody said, you sound a lot echoier than you used to. And I was like, what? Really? And it was because I changed my microphone setup. And I hadn't gone back and done those tests. So make sure if anything is changing that you do a little test for yourself. And then just put it on your radar every couple months or every six months or if you see a big Zoom update go out to make sure that you're testing to see what that those levels are. So there are a few things that you can do here in Zoom. So I always say go to the, down to the where you see the microphone, click that little up arrow, that little like carrot up, um, and then click audio settings. And so here's where you're just going to see um, – You can see your speaker, you can see your output level, you can see your microphone, you can see how mine's jumping up and down while I'm using my computer microphone because I'm using my actual microphone for recording this video. But little things that could impact what you're seeing also for your levels would be you can adjust here your output volume, you can adjust. So this is output speaker is just how your computer, you're hearing yourself out of your computer. Um, The microphone, this is where you could adjust what your input level if you wanted to make it higher, make it lower. Um, I have right now just auto on, but you can turn that off and you could manually adjust if you think that's something that might help you. Um, It also could be if you're having issues hearing yourself uh, that you it suppresses your background noise. Um, So making sure if you are in an environment, I have mine again set to auto, but maybe you know your computer's a little older and it makes a lot of noise, like let's keep it on high. Or I've had some speakers who sound a little funky and it sounds like their voice is being suppressed. I'll have them go down to low because that usually means they're Um, Zoom software can't figure out what's background noise and what's their voice, and it will actually kind of suppress your voice, which is an interesting one. So that's another place you can see it. And then I would also, in uh, music and professional audio, I would always check this box so that it always shows in-meeting option to enable original sound. And so this is a way that you can turn some things on and off from inside your meeting. I am in a meeting right now and able to adjust these, which is great. Um, But just that does turn on here in that upper left-hand corner, original sound on and off. And I can also then check which one I want to see the original sound on from. So those are just a couple of the things that I use if I was helping you troubleshoot your audio and you wanted to talk over some background music. Again, not a one-stop shop. You definitely need to test it and play around with it on your end. But I promise you there is a level that you can get to where you can hear yourself really nicely over some background music. So don't give up. That's all I have for you folks. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. I drop new videos every single Monday, so I'll see you in my next video, folks. Bye.